Welcome back, guys. If you're just joining us, you got to look out the uh, Ghost MVP and all of his highlight plays. He had a fantastic game on the Callista, especially after the laning phase did end. Take a look at both the AD carries here, but Sandbox, really intelligent play overall to snatch that game up in just 30 minutes. Honestly, it, was, it looked like Ghost was spooked during the laning phase, right, when he was ultra defensive, and we thought maybe down one game he shouldn't be afraid of no Ghost, but in this case, Ghost hard carries, picks up the MVP, that last team fight, replay worthy. Speaking of live or replay, it's game number three. Sandbox has side selection, chooses blue side against. The series so far has been blue side favored. What's gonna happen here? The Kale has been banned the entire series, so has the Morgan. I have a feeling we're not gonna see too much of a change up here. Although, the Silas hasn't been banned just yet by Dom1. They could consider letting it go through and saying, well, it'll be your decision if you actually do want to play that. Snuggery not able to uh, quite carry the game 1v9 himself in the last one. Now, this is the first game of the playoffs in Korea. Remember, contrary to every other region, this is a best of three. This is the final game, not the third out of five. So it's all on this best of one. But who will face Kings of Dragon X in our first best of five in Korea? So, Banwise, you already ran it down. The Jace this time is gone. But the Rise priority will remain for Damwon Gaming. No surprise there. Callista first of it. I wonder what Damwon Gaming will take into it because I think Ash Tom Kench is what they would usually take in this spot. Yeah, it's been all about the Jarvan here today for On Fleek. This is going to be his third game in a row playing the Jarvan. You mentioned the Ash Tom Kench. That seems very likely as we're flying through this big map. But. I think Sandbox was very ready for that. They go for the Wombo Engage duo that obviously a no escape AD carry like Ash doesn't want to deal with in an ideal sense, but this is a duo where if they can hit the mid game running, rotate to the mid lane, have Tom Kench, and just the utility that Ash provides in their kit specifically with the Hawk shot. You can get a pretty big jungle lead here. I want to see Sandbox ban Rek'Sai. Now, while Canyon's Rek'Sai hasn't been that impressive, I feel like Ash utility plus also just the tools that a Rek'Sai gets in the early game, you shouldn't necessarily be gifting that over. We'll see if there's a disagreement here on the Sandbox side. So far, they ban away Canyon's Ultra Comfort, which might be a surprise for some viewers, but Kha'Zix is what he has gone to the most this season. Does come through another low Blanc ban this time around. Of course, no Olaf to be taken off the table as another jungler goes by, but it is the Kindred. Not the Rek'Sai, so if Canyon does want to hop onto that again, he can. Doesn't seem like Sandbox were too scared of that in those games, and uh, he's going to change his mind and go for Lee Sin. Had some decent Lee Sin games, and Damwon Gaming have had some great ones, but remember, Punch is not in this game. It is still Canyon, no roster change for Damwon Gaming. Coming into game number three, the first best of one they've lost with this roster since they started again in week number 10. Eyes on Sandbox, they're looking for top lane and Ostensibly mid lane, if it is going to be another support Galio. This would be the Nico being flashed. We've seen this match up twice. It went once really well with the Nico versus Rise, and the next time it went awfully. Nogari likes to build penetration for lane and has done that in his only Rise game this series in a different matchup. So we imagine this is Summon on the Nico, but it's not all locked in until the Fat Lady sings. Gotta wait until that last pick does show her face. Like Kali is going to do a little bit of that, but it is going to be actually Lissandra at the end. This dub has a big smile on his face. Final pick here for Dumb One Gaming. They're pretty confident on the lane assignment, so they could actually just take the Corky, have him farm it out, and then rely on Nuggery subverting a matchup that I think a lot of other Nico players be pretty pumped to go into because it's Nuggery Rise suddenly things fall away. Another very squishy Corky comps, and no guarantee that Corky will be able to pop off as the game goes on, because in terms of front lines, Cassandra, Jarvan, and Galio, whatever the build path, is going to be better than anything Dom1 Gaming can put together. They're going to be a lot squishier. Nogari doesn't build Righteous Glory if he can get away with it. He's going to be going straight damage. That's what Nogari does. I mean, and, look uh, at the two teams, right? You know. It's honestly... 
burst damage versus burst damage, high damage versus high damage, that is also a very snowball-centric choice that means that whoever is ahead, when we hit mid-game, gets access to vision, gets first access to objectives, and unless Dumb One can steal multiple Mountain Drakes and Realm Warp through, that should suit Sandbox Gaming. They'll take game number one again if they can actually just be a bit more on point with that Drake control. Well, so far along, the red side has been the victor twice in a row, but we'll have to wait and see if da uh, Damon Gaming, I almost called them Dan Box, that would have been an interesting combination, but uh, no, just going to be Sandbox over here, the Nico showing her face once again. Saw a bunch of that from Gen Z. They were able to avoid relegations, but now we're on the opposite side of the table as Sandbox are gonna try to employ her to get into the next round of playoffs. We're gonna be so interested to see which way the pendulum swings in the Nico versus Rise matchup. The Ash Tom Kench we hypothesize comes true, but who will go on to make it to the best of fives all on this one game, Valdez? And I don't think it's a game that's been won in draft. It's gonna be one where that execution in the early game is gonna be the central point. It's a big one. Whoever wins this will move on to playoff round number one against Kingston. Here we go, game number three for all the marbles as we do hop onto the rift this time around. Lissandra, Jarvan, Galio combo, Wombo engage and temporary front line from game number one is back in game number three. Now remember that Sandbox did a lot right but only messed up around Drake's. That was an objective they could have taken because they had the smash and grab priority in multiple lanes. They kind of slipped Many around it and it ended up rolling yeah. high with the Mountain Drakes and made some of those Realm Warp plays possible. But Sandbox largely were winning in other sides of the game. So returning to that and executing just like they did in game one with a fairly small adjustment, I think they're pretty comfortable that just from talking to their coach a couple of times between series one and series two, they can make the adjustments to close it out. However, Dumb One, they won that game. They're feeling like they can win this one as well. See if Dumb One Gaming can fight a bit stronger in the early game. Canyon needs to make us a believer because two Rek'Sai games weren't that impressive. Take a look at all the runes down there. An interesting one that we don't see all the time is the Conqueror for the Lee Sin. We saw players when that, you know, got changed. They were trying it when it was pretty strong, but eventually moved it back to stuff like Electrocute, but ended bringing it out here once again. Always want to play around a level two Jarvan from blue side ganking bot lane. Didn't want to walk up there because you're very unlikely to have W skilled at level one as a Tom Kench. Not going to find it though and was spotted on the vision. Again, we'll talk about the Comet coming through from Rise. We saw in another matchup. The reason why it's relevant in this one is when we saw Rise lose twice against Gen G with Sword going Aftershock on the rise, trying to negate damage. If you go Comet, you can take burst trades against Nico, and you don't just kind of have your health bar at the whim of the ranged auto attacker on hit Nico. I do like that. You can already see a bit of that trading here. You use like the Cutter W aggressive, the just to make the point, you use the W aggressive, I want to show it while it's on screen with the clone, because then it blocks overloads. And that's the big thing there is that you want to block the Q and decrease those burst trades with the rift. It's definitely something nice. Always want to try to do that. And you can see that Summit is looking for that empowered root just to keep Nuggery in place. You notice that uh, just the Doran's Blade in the pot here for Summit. Whereas we have refillable for the Rise, so a little bit more. Oh, Canyon doesn't see I'm thinking of okay. Been able to sneak in, but then chose himself and runs away. So decides, no, I would not like to take this fight, and no, I would not like to challenge you at the crumbs. In matchups like this, when you have those line skill shots like Rise Q, the W max burst that you always go to for on hit damage on the on hit Nico build, you know, as opposed to say Q if you're an AP Nico, has that double value, right? Because the lower cooldown scaling is relevant for these trades that Rise is going to increasingly take with levels. So. These are matchups where the Nico does feel really good. However, Nagori has subverted it before. Can he subvert again? Actually, a nice sweeper here from on fleek to continue to yeah. allow the Nico to push up and use the W aggressively. 
Looks like he took that burst and has been able to put that to great use so far. Still over back to lane and by Doug, just picking up double dark seal. It's a big fight in the bottom side. Double taunt here. Cleanse has to be used by Meryl, as now Flash has to be used by Showmaker, just to get away from a couple of good ganks. And in the light of those same three core champions of Lissandra, Darwin, and Galio being replayed, let's remember how game number one went. Dove's ability to push in the early game before Corky can actually trade and chip down Lissandra's health bar and force her in lane on the turret was used to roam to bot lane with that Galio all in, you'll remember, Valdez. Got those early kills in the bot lane. And also the double snuggle from game number one for the Jarvan happened again. So those things are definitely a replay of our game number one when Sandbox was last on blue side. Canyon on a different jungle champion is trying to bide his time. Fake trying to hit the rift hard, but gonna be spotted in a war. Backing on a ward here is going to try to turn this one around as Canyon. Going to make that Conqueror work for him and push on Fleek away. You'll notice that both Ghost and Joker immediately disengage. The reason why he takes the Q is just a scuttle spawn. So now he has a health lead in a lane where they don't have priority. No cleanses down. That's why Joker starts to channel the taunt. But it's not going to be anything happening from Beryl. And it will not be three scuttles in a row this time, so a small adaptation. And he gets a scuttle crab onto the lead set. Yeah, nice little win there. They also have a fantastic amount of vision in the bottom river already. Double control ward. Have to imagine that's both Canyon and Shoming putting those two down. And with the Infernal spawning first once again, as it did in game two, no doubt the focus will be there as the game moves along. <laughs> Will Dove find the room, Tommy? That was the big win in game number one. Around level seven, where he could push in a core key, got the great room off. They got double summoner from the AD carry and still and killed the support. Remembering? You get a replay on that, especially with Callista Galio being guaranteed follow up. That would be really big. So much pressure on Ash Tom Kench means that Rise has been able to push up and get a CS lead, but no vision now. So we see a big wombo play from Sam. Does have the devour, but no cleanse. So they gotta get on top of Barrel too. Will the flash come in? No, he just goes from the top there. Onto the Ash. So the, the consume is uh or the devourer rather is just gonna be perfect in the night out game. Felt like the three part gank that was required to respect all the cooldowns that was up was a little bit rushed on the execution and they can't even get a flash from barrel that should have probably been the minimum of that gank timing so nothing doing this time as rise gets to play so wantonly aggressive and you play this matchup a hundred times and not often can Noggery just play like there's no enemy jungler but with all the attention bot side, it allows Noggery to once again get a CS lead in a tricky lane. It's not a big one, but even going even is fine from Noggery, given that they were able to win game number one with Noggery in a huge gold hole compared to his opponent. This does seem to be the one thing that's been going well for Dominic consistently over three games is that Noggery hasn't really been shut down in any big way. They haven't been trying to punish his early aggression or anything like that. As Leads in, started the Infernal, but looks like it was stopped, as it is still alive. Showmaker almost on a package timing when he can do, again, get back, get a shop in, and find those extra items towards Triforce to keep this Lissandra in lane for as long as possible. Quail walks up, extra utility from Ash, no doubt helping with spotting out enemy jugglers and the like. Canyon tried to take kind of a against tempo drain, but it wasn't gonna happen. First spawn Infernal means no freebies from either side. Coming on in, you can see the focus that continues to be in this bottom river. Lissandra here at level seven and has a blasting wand up against just the phase here from Corky. I feel like will be a little bit more useful, but Dove low on mana and a blue buff for Showmaker means that Sandbox will have to be careful about engaging at this moment. Was lane control, and the full Rotatoes isn't available yet because Barrel's level five, so they can't go for a big road play for the Abyssal Voyage. So, dumb one gaming, need a bit of trepidation, which they were showing, we should admit. Package is available for Showmaker. We're after eight minutes when that first spawn comes in, so he can look to match a back timing from Sandbox. We're trying to fake this one and show himself, get a Glacial Path out, but Dove is so low on mana, and you can see 
that Kenny was just waiting for that fight to break out to immediately go for the counter gank. So good on Sandbox to avoid that. Which end first item. Looks like it's going to be the finish here for Summit. Understands all the early magic damage. Trade will come in, and we know that Void Staff, Double Magic Pan, those were all the investments from Nogari. You look at the enemy team and you say, if he goes Double Pen again, how could you ever team fight against Lissandra, Nico, Galio, CC? Like, the chance that Merc Treads gets value is over 100%, and yeah. yet. This is Nuggery, right? And we actually think more often than not, he goes for the pure laning build and starts sacking the penetration. He'll be getting on that in just a moment, no doubt. As he does. Most CS in the game, though, going to show Maker here at 100. Uh -oh. Trying to engage on the nuclear. Page call comes in, gets the knockup. Waiting for the ass to pop out, but can't quite time it in time as nuclear. Anyway, he's gonna have to flash away from now. Joker just desperate for one more second removed from the yeah. amount of time you can be in the belly, but even with to the, the best attempt at not stacking CC, all they can get is a cleanse. Canyon using this time to start up the Rift Herald off spawn at 10 minutes. And we talked about those timings where Dubs pushed in, he got no roam, and actually he's gonna get roamed on with this Rift Herald start. I love going for that raid at 10 minutes, especially with all the shenanigans down the bottom side. You can do it really fast as the Lee Sin. You have the Corky doing a good job pushing. You get to see the amount of damage that comes out as Dove. It's just not oh. taking Trace. The big one nearly takes him out on the back side. 44 HP. Lissandra oh. out of lane can teleport back in. I was going to pose the question of where does the Rift Herald go, but they know who it goes to. It goes to your boy Nuggery. Only as much gold as possible injected into his build, and actually, they're looking to take down a Nico on the back end. It's gonna draw a TP. Nuggery hasn't noticed it yet. Nuggery in a bit of trouble here. It's gonna flash away, but we do have the Lissandra behind you. Can he get a rage for the Devourer? No, not quite. As that is gonna go the way of Nico. First blood, flashing on in. Gonna get that stun as both these guys are so low. They're gonna flash on in for that kill onto Dove as well, and now Joker. In a little bit of trouble, but Canyon gets low and will deter that kill. Barrel's W was two seconds from being available off cooldown as he popped out. Very important there, was in range, but couldn't devour. They're able to take a decent trade overall. Very notable that Nogri didn't notice teleport at all. Very Nogri, actually. Yeah. Overall, he got the gold, though, and that's all he cares about. We'll see what the lane assignments are after this, because things are actually a little bit all over the place. Nogri just teleports into the mid lane and draws a counter TP from Summit. And that immediately goes to the top lane, which is uh, where he finds himself most comfortable. So we're going to take a look here at Beryl as he does make his way up towards the top side. The TP comes in early and oh, Nogri oh, actually... Really? He devoured a minion! Uh -oh. He actually was slow also in this place, so obviously Damwon is a team. Just didn't notice it because he comes in while it's an aggressive W. You can see at the bottom against confirmation it is on cooldown. That's a whoopsie that he hopes wasn't going to be replayed, but we saw about as it happened. I love the observers not letting anything get by them. They're like, wait, why is his devour down? What exactly is he devouring? Well, it's a minion in the mid lane to push for no reason. As uh, now we're trying to get on top of Joker here. Will he get to the blasting plant? Just like. Yes, he will. That beats call available just in case. Yeah, I mean, if he gets there and he saves Nuggery's life, that might be a two for zero, maybe even a three, as uh, Joker was coming in as well. I'm guessing if we have any criticism for the observers, we better double check our facts, because they clearly love breaking balls. Oh, yeah. That extra replay there, being like, no, 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 this was a fail on his part. So uh, I'm a bit scared now about this. We already called them 200 IQ observers. Maybe they're getting a bit too big for their britches, you know? They're keeping everybody accountable, that's for sure. Not giving anyone any space. Not even Beryl, who was chosen as the starting support and has played all three games. Notable that there were no substitutions amongst three games here in this wild card. Beryl this time just holding back. Good. I managed to pull up and then having the eat there. We're finally seeing how this matchup's supposed to go in lane. Spoilers, really bad for Dove as the lane goes on and didn't get that roam timing. In fact, he's down an item completion and one CS to get the Cull cast in. So Showmaker's about to just have a huge lead in gold Yeah. when that first minion dies. In the 1v1 matchup, Nogari says, cool Nico counter pick. Nameplates are on in this Rise versus Nico match. 
Summit's good too, just like not able to outplay Nuggery as it goes Canyon trying to set this up. Oh. But he sets himself up as he's not able to get in range of a Devourer and now has to save Showmaker here and trying to go on the disengage. Nice amount of damage though is going to be pushed back as you can see still. Corky and Ash will do a nice amount of that. Unfleet Cataclysm over the arrow that amusingly hit Dove, who was trying to come in with his ultimate. Dove stays out, can't turn a kill though, and even though at the end, Nuclear and Showmaker are free hitting, they don't have their items to be as scary just yet. The shop hasn't come in with that Cull Gold onto Showmaker. Turret plates four in the rise versus Nico lane is pretty significant. Rise has got his Sorcerer's Shoes. This rise ain't grouping unless he's realm warping his team in for a Baron. Watch the replay here. I love the Ash Arrow timing. Watch the Ash Arrow, because on fleek, this gets kicked in, and then Ash Arrow goes literally over the arrow yeah. with the animation there. You can't override CC with the Cataclysm. Cataclysm will always find its man, so that's the reason why it looks like that's no remake required. We had it a lot in our Jarvan vs. Gragas games. Rise almost has the turret down, but actually getting the standing goal is going to require recall timing on the side. So another Infernal comes up, and you have to imagine that with the package, Showmaker is really going to show him who's boss. He's going to mark his territory, if you will, in the mid lane. I'm just still smiling about the Sorcerer's Shoes, because I'm 100% certain every other top laner in the LCK would have gone Mercs. Yeah. But yeah, you try and tell Nogari that, and he just looks at you quizzically, no doubt. It's like, but but the damage. It's like, but I have to win the lane so that I can carry my team. Otherwise, what am I doing? Sin not going to be able to follow over on Flake this time. Just Nogari thinks he is a very engaging personality. We're on to the Infernal here. First Infernal went sandbox, and answering one for that one. On Flake, not going to give his life. Says, okay, you can have this one, but. Uh, You'd have to imagine that an Infernal on Porky, Ash, and Rise is pretty damn good as the game goes along. And the as the game goes along quotient is less and less when the Rise is up in gold and the Cork is cashing in culls and has two and a one and a half items, soon to be a rapid fire cannon. Now, Dumb One Gaming don't have the sort of comp that makes Corky easy. The big, beefy front line with strong engage, and then Corky and Ash just free hitting from the back line very much need to keep their vision on point, and they can't just go for selfish scaling, give up the map to give the scaling, and then just not be able to get the value out of the coffee. So it's still going to be a 2-3 pop plan, rather than kind of brainless horn walks up and horn horns, and then everything falls into place. But with how the lane phase is gone, this Corgi's having just uh, a long walk. He's definitely not feeling bad about his walkies today, as Sandbox needs to rotate people through mid lane oh, just to not lose the turret! Why is he giving himself to the Corky here? I don't understand it. He's down four levels. Showmaker's like, wait, you didn't see my items and my kills and my call? What are you doing? Well, the call is gone, and so was Galio's health bar on that play. And that just means there's no Galio bot lane, so Summit, he slowed this rotation. I'm on gaming, getting CS leads that were all on the side of Sandbox in game number one, right? They had CS leads and gold from turret plays. They just didn't have the mountain drakes. Drakes are even golds for Damwon. We're so scared about how strong this Corgi's going to be. He's definitely been eating multiple meals. He's fed, and that sounds pretty scary. Yeah. He's, uh, he's a buff Corgi. He's, he's having a lot of fun. As uh, our little swole boy is going to be... Really, really fed, but nice little timing for Dove and on fleet to come on in here and do a bit of damage to the mid lane. It's pretty much all they can find right now. And it's the spirit of the teleport bot lane play they could make in game number one. They've got double teleport compared to a Corky who has to take cleanse for the matchup. So there will always be windows where you get little things. Little things don't mean turret plates. We're too late for that. Little things now uh -oh. mean a roam where they're spotted. Okay, Arrow's gonna hit him, but on fleet doesn't have flag and drag. Has to flash away. Oh, oh, but here comes Nuggery in the back line. The biggest monster you've ever seen from your nightmares doing that damage. And wow, Sandbox not able to put out anything here as the Galio just disappears, bringing the whole squad as well. As we're not done here, we're looking for Ghost. That's a double kill now to Nuggery on the teleport. They got Nuggery to teleport, but only because there was a killing field for him. Just an absolute slaughter 
in the back line there, just taking down multiple members. Yes, two and a half thousand gold after yes. that teleport play. He licked his lips and said, this is a lot of kills. And you know what? He was right. And you look at his items, who were talking about all the penetration. He had to finish for that fight, and he was doing some damage. Hey, that is for sure. He doesn't have that void stuff yet, but you know it's coming just to dunk the yeah. wits end even further. So much standing gold is gleefully claimed by Dumb One Gaming. And you're just never looking at the minimap for the Nogari flank teleport. That's just not what this boy is all about. But he finds his spot. We should watch the replay because this is definitely the creeping doom. They're chasing in. The Ash Hour doesn't hit one of the people that were walking in aggressively. But Nogari had already teleported. We were zoomed in on the front side of this play. Nogari gets to the back line. Doesn't need Merc Treads apparently because there's no threat on him. It's just a no out ultimate from the Lissandra. Lissandra gets out, but the same can't be said about the rest of Sandbox. When you're a rise and there's nothing in front of you, and you've already had a good laning phase, and you get a fight like that, you're licking your lips, as you said. He's just unbelievable amounts of damage that comes out, and well, the desperation sets in for Sandbox. They're no down 5,000. They are going to try to get this top hence down, who does a bit of damage. Do they run it back? It's 20 minutes into the game. They get a pick. They don't feel strong enough to just run it back. Remember, they have Callista. They didn't have to use much to get that one kill. And Damwon are now even more ahead than they were in game number two. So there was an outside chance to just try to run a Baron. It's bold. You lose the game if you lose the Baron. They feel like 20 minutes is too early. But if they repeat that pick again in a few minutes' time, I think they might have to make that roll. And you pointed out, this is Nogari through and through. If he's going to teleport to a team fight as Sorcerer Sue's Rise, there's no chance he's going to buy team fight utility with his next purchase. He's going to buy a Void Star just for late. These people do not have MR anymore. It doesn't matter what you're building. Um, you're you're at zero. He's doing basically two damage to your face. And you know what the biggest problem is? You can't look at this and be saying, Nerf Rise, what the hell, Righteous Glory is so tanky, he does so much damage. Nogari just builds the damage straight up and, uh, well, flanks himself. <laughs> well, we do still have Elise in. He's going to be able to help dunk this poor girl down as Nico. Gets three on one in the bottom side. Ash Arrow. Okay. Oh, that was close. That would have been a three and a half second stun. It was so far away, but just does go into the nether realm. We're not sure where Ash Arrows go when they miss, but that one never to be described. Crocky is going to miss his Valkyrie, but Meryl is in vision, or rather in range. Be able to do that and look at the crits coming in from Corky. Will Got he him. just get it to flash on him too? As he's looking for more. He hasn't had enough to eat this little Corgi. Almost gets dumb on the backside as he's gonna get away, but that was really dangerous. Big one would have killed him as well. This Corky is out of control. The rooms never happened. Dumb one gaming. They're too far ahead, Valdez, and Sandbox can't make the creative flanks to make the pay. Doesn't look like they have it in them as Nukuri goes. If I were you, I'd be running away, man. Not much you can do against this rise, but they're gonna try. And he's gonna oh. step up to him. What is going on with the damage? You gotta be careful. As it's Nukuri going 1v3 on the front line, he's got a big shield too. Has the Devourer as well as Joker just coming on in. Trying to do the tanking, but it is going to be the Baron and a kill that go to Damwon. Sandbox is just kind of offering themselves up in tribute in this game, number three. They couldn't find a creative timing to get the Baron off three minutes earlier, and three minutes later, they have to deal with this hopping mad Corky Corky. He walks up, he's the god of damage, and that's before Infinity Edge is even done. Insult upon injury. Damwon Gaming get that first Baron. We watch the replay here. Too many people walk up to the showmaker to the stable after the devour to make kids pay. He's really trying to force it, and barely any damage comes out from anyone else. Like, if we take a look at the damage done in the last quote unquote team fight, it's a couple of volleys, maybe some autos at the end there from nuclear, but it's all the Corky that basically kills two and a half people. Well, Rise also saw so do a bit of damage. That arrow goes wide. Okay, is it gonna matter though? Nice. Stop watch at the same time for hey. both of the junglers as Canyon 
Almost seeing some damage there. He's gonna get out though, no one dies, but that feels like the least of their problems. Nogari's level 16. Pushing up the minion wave in bot. Summit will do his best to push it back, but good luck with that, mate. Dumbon Gaming pushing mid as well. At least Sandbox can walk up to try to wave because Ash Arrow is on cooldown, and so is Lee Sin King. Nogari's up three levels on Summit right now. You mentioned that uh, counter pick? I think it was. Nuggery's just <laughs> laughing in the face of him right now as uh, it's all his show. Joker trying desperately to catch the Corky, but it's uh, it ain't gonna happen. Showmaker is not gonna miss another Valkyrie, and with Baron, Dom One are not wasting any time. Pushing through the mid lane as well. Yet no Ash Arrow to guarantee this, but they might get it anyway. Hey, aftershock here for Dove is gonna last quite a while. The Canyon going on in. He's gonna force that self ult, but the big one is just pressuring everybody away. They absolutely cannot defend this inhibitor. But if they only lose one inhibitor, that's probably more than they deserve with how far behind they are. They took a lot of dog and risk trying to protect, not just being split down by Nogari in the bot lane and four in the mid lane. It actually only ends up being one inhibitor. The reason for that is kind of unclear. Part of it is gold timings, and Vindy Edge done for Showmaker, some big back time. They didn't have enough vision to keep all their flanks warded. It's not like there was a big objective to fight over, because the Baron is still going to be worn for another 40 seconds. However, they got the first inhibitor. Their item timings are just outrageous at this point, especially on the carries. <laughs> yeah, um, Corky's just going to do that thing in solo queue where sometimes he'll go up against a Corky, and he gets fed, and then it's just one auto and a missile, and you basically lose all your health. You're like, wait, what, what is this champion? Why, why is he just able to do this to me? And there's all those other games where Dove gets the roams off, Forky's slowly building three items, has no front line, and, you know, lives, so it's very hard to kill the damn Forky, but just doesn't put out any relevant damage, right? But in this sort of a game, it doesn't matter that he doesn't have a front line. They're so far ahead, and then pink CC brings down so much doom. You've never seen a rise in Corky quite like this when it comes to damage at 25 minutes into the game. It's the single Infernal. Nogari in the bot lane again. He doesn't see a flank teleport available to him. Sandbox is going to have to try a Wombo, but I just don't know what a one team fight for Sandbox looks like in game number three. I feel like we've already reached that stage where you guys might remember Nuggery just one-shotting illusion, basically, in under a second. Feels like that's going to happen in this game as well, as the push is just never-ending. And he's level 17. He's two levels even above the Corky, somehow. Just uh, unbelievable scaling right now for the Rise. As I don't think there's going to be a chance here. They're going to get oh. on top of Nuclear, though. Jamauer does come in. And the rest of the team here having a bit of trouble. You see Showmaker's doing the damage, so where's the follow-up? Nice kick, though, from the side of Canyon to get Ghost out of the fight. And Showmaker still is almost at full health. It's just going to shred through that back line that tries to get in there. And by the way, Thuggery's still pushing. Sandbox plays it perfectly, but they're too far behind about as The items are there, and Summit's health bar is not. It doesn't exist. The 404 comes through. Once again to replay as Domlin Gaming looks to push to end the game. Second and next to start, here we go. Yeah, they're just going on in for it. Everybody's gonna die, and Domlin Gaming will be moving on to face King Zone in the first round of the playoff. Domlin Gaming take it down. What was a really entertaining wild card match? So many in the past with two zeros. Well, one team came in prepped and the other team did not. Dumb One Gaming had all the question marks about who was going to be on the roster. Could they actually make the map plays work? And to a great extent, Sandbox made some good decisions in game number one and two that only Drake's counted against them. But in game number three, you start to see the potential of going with the Young Gun Nuggery and the Young Gun Canyon be fully realized. Nuggery is this tantalizing player who's so damn good in the laning phase that if he's empowered to do so, and amusingly, it's from a teleport flank with the Sorcerer's Shoes Rise, he buys items for lane, he takes his bone and goes home, and somehow Corgi doesn't get the bone metaphor. And with that bone, which was that Void Staff, the Rise rolls over the members and a very well-deserved bow from Dumb One Gaming. They will face King Zone Dragon X, who have some young players on their roster as well. And wouldn't it be awesome to have a full five-game series between two of our young and up-and-coming teams in the LCK?
Well, that's exactly what we're going to get, and that's going to be in two, get two days, of course, on Friday. So make sure you guys are not missing. Same place, same time for Dablon versus King Zone. Keep in mind that the Rise was given over twice, and they banned out Kale twice. And, I mean, Nuggery only played the Kale twice, and that's all he had to do to convince them to ban it. And then he's like, well, I guess I'll just hop out of my Rise. I heard I'm pretty good at that pick, too. And that's the problem. The reason why I say such a tantalizing player is if he gets it all together, and we had the moment where he didn't see the teleport playing come in, he was already super good, right? He was one of the main reasons they won this series. As an enemy team, in the first round even, you start banning away top laners. All right, well, the Jace is scary, the Vlad, the Ryze, the Kale, the Silas. Like, you're stacking up picks. Like, the Silas, yes, they were able to outplay as a five, but he dumpstered Karma in the laning phase yeah. after being solo killed. There's just too many headaches. You just can't deal with this player. If they get the pieces around him, he will be that final domino and the push that sets the dominoes rolling. And Ghost had that amazing moment at the end of game number two. And we must remember that this is our goodbye to Sandbox, a team that came into LCK Spring, and we were like, well, we definitely know who our 10th place team is. It's going to be <laughs> Sandbox Gaming. Yeah. How far away from that? We had Sandbox in second for a lot of the season, in third. They, at the last, with King Zone's ascent, fall into wild card. And in three games, they're pushed out by Damwon Gaming. A big congratulations goes to Sandbox, and sadly, with winners come losers. Unfortunately, Sandbox Gaming will not return, and they also do not make it to Rift Rivals with this victory. Damwon Gaming, if the format stays the same, will be the fourth and final representative of the LCK. It's always hard to watch the losing team. You mentioned the young players on both of these teams. As Ghost has been around for a while, but still feeling it really hard onto this one. That's a very interesting corgi. It's a corgi butt. On the, on the left side. Beautiful. And obviously a raccoon on the right side for Nuggery as he was the the two of them were the big carries yeah. in uh, a lot of these games so you really got to hand it to them. And Nuggery for the win does come through in game number three. So shout out to them. Really excited for that best of five on Friday. The glass half full of Dumb One Gaming you know, we heard the stories last year before they made LCK of how well Dumb One and Griffin were doing in scrims against Fnatic and IG and all yeah. those teams at the top. And, you know, you wanted to pay respect to it, but it's scrims. It means something it does. And we saw all of Dumb One's understandable, oh, the macro falls apart. Okay, the young players don't have a shot caller. But you still wanted to think about where it could go. And I think game three is a preview of what could happen. When you have these players who at times have been all as a squad, top 10 in solo queue. It's tantalizing. Justice, Noggery is a player, showmaker on the Corky. It wasn't just the Noggery show today. Dumb One Gaming, I don't think this year is where they will get everyone on the same page, the level that's possible, but they could still make worlds. They could still make deep runs into playoffs and world's qualification. And then with another year of seasoning, oh man, what could we have on us? It's, it's nice to see that, especially in 2019, with all of the up-and-coming teams, the new Bloods, and a bunch of teams now coming up from Challengers, and we get to see the two of them fight it out here in the wild card. And it was a very entertaining best of three. It was kind of expecting a 2-0, maybe to Sandbox, maybe to whoever took the first game, but players showed up today, especially Nuggery and Showmaker. You really got to hand it to them or put it in the work when it matters most. It's going to be so interesting when we get King Zone versus Damwon because Rascal, because super up and comers increasing their performance, Rascal will need to be steady against Nogari. Probably the hardest 1v1 opponent next to someone like Khan that we have in this league. Because you'd probably take over Canyon. I don't think Canyon had to do too much in this series. He was decent without being outstanding. But then we get Pawn versus Showmaker. Like, What's that going to be? Which side of the coin are we going to see on those players? King Zone's bot lane comes in heavily favored. Can King Zone outdo Dumb One with the nameplates on, or can Dumb One outdo King Zone with the nameplates done in the top lane? Is it going to be bot versus top? Is someone going to step up? Already, we have questions, and only a best of five can answer them. It's a mouthwatering one, and of course, you will not want to miss that, guys. Again, Friday, 5 p.m. KST, same time. Same place as 
Just taking a look at some of the highlights towards the end. This was their last ditch effort, but once again, Merrill's top bench. He made a couple of mistakes here towards the end, but in general, it's very solid when they needed him to protect the carries that were so, so far fed, even when they get caught in the worst position. And well, that's the story of a Corky who gets miles ahead. As we said already, we'll make the reference again. This Corky got, this Corky Corgi got a lot of walkies done. And uh, you know, Dove just couldn't make their own play that worked in game number one. And then you're just free hitting on a champion. You outrange your wave there post level 11, starts to approximate what a Lissandra has. And then you just pile on the damage. They actually messed up a lot of that play around Tom Kench. Tom Kench moved out of devour range and nuclear almost died straight yeah. up. Unfortunately for Sandbox next to him, there was a super fed Corgi. This Corgi means two playoff MVPs. The race's showmaker so far, he's got the double MVP in series number one. Yeah, and honestly, can't argue with that, right? He was doing the big boy carrying and dominating the lane a couple of times in a row. Keep in mind that Sandbox opted into this one, did not ban the Corgi, took the, the Lissandra that has been slowly falling in priority. The showmaker took advantage of it twice in a row do some big damage, and you can see, once the Corky gets fed, especially with the top pants and the Valkyrie, you're never touching this guy. 958 DPM for a champion whose DPM is usually back-ended because of all the AOE and team fights and just how the damage just multiplicatively scales yeah. with the fact that you can't mitigate those magic damage crits. So uh, that's just a Corky that overperformed. And when Don wants that overperforming, you start losing. Yeah, yes, so guys, we will have an interview now. I'm going to hand it to Jason for translation. I heard this is your first solo MVP interview. Today, before game, I think we never took down Sandbox with LCK, so we were really nervous. But I think we were able to make the first interview. You know, the match history. Could have added more pressure on you guys, right? How did you prepare for today's series? We're really working hard. We should never just get defeated by them, not against. So we really want to defeat them. It could have been 2-0, but ended up in 2-1 victory. The game got extended a little bit, so how did you prepare for today's series? We should never just get defeated by them, not against. So we really want to defeat them. It could have been 2-0, but ended up in 2-1 victory. The game got extended a little bit, so how did you stay focused? But game two, I think we almost won it, so we lost it. We were so sad that we were a bit exhausted, but our coach. Just so take a bite of a chocolate bar. So we're able to get back with energy after the bite of a chocolate bar. So game one and three were all Lissandra versus Corky. What are your thoughts about the matchup? I, mean, I think it's not bad. Lissandra is a, a very main champion, so I think it's a really good champion against Lissandra. And the most important thing during lane phase, well, you cannot go with TP with Corky. So the first phase uh, timing is the most important when Sandra only can go back to base and TP back in. And there was this tough fight, team fight over here with the highlights. So this is the timing for my package. And so Rexai told me that just get your package and let's try Dragon. After that, you guys picked up three Mountain Dragon, two Wind Dragons. Did you plan to like pick up all the dragons as, long as, as soon as you got two dragon dra uh, Mountain Dragons? Well, I mean, Kenyan doesn't really play like this, but today he was taking a lot of care of the objectives, and I like that. Corky was the one that gave the first victory to Corky in LCK. It was actually on the six consecutive losses. I think you're the good pilot. So, what are thoughts on Corky right now? What's the special about it? Corky is an easy champion. Yeah, nothing special. It's farm well. It's easy. Just like you said last time, just farm well. The same goes to Corgi, right? Game three. You were giving so much pressure to Lissandra. You had such an early Triforce. 
So what was different between the game one and two? I was able to pick up double kills in top lane, so I mean, I was scaled enough so early. Pick a band. What came to your mind as soon as you saw the Sanja versus Corky? Nothing, like, I didn't think that I'm going to win, but it's like, if we go to a late game, so I knew that we were going to win, because we had better late game competition. And we have another highlight that you and Ryze in the joint team fight and taking down all the sandbox players. Well, actually, uh, we were getting really a bit pressure, but Logri just told me I'm going to TP in, so just wipe them out, wipe them out. So that's what we did. But Logri got so much target banned today. He didn't even feel any pressure or did he feel sad about it? He didn't actually mention about this, but I mean, Logri actually has an infinite, in, like, unlimited champion pool, so we're not, we were not the worried. Yeah, what are your thoughts about Ryze in top lane? About Kuroki and Ryze? I mean, there is a big different synergy. It's, so, it's not a special composition. But when it goes to you and Logri, there is a synergy, right? True. Uh, I wish I could have had Logri up here as well. So you guys are stepping up to face up against Kingzone, but Kingzone looks so flawless in round two. However, a lot of people were expecting Sandbox to kind of in a lead of the day, but you guys have turned that around. So what are you expecting from your upcoming series? It would be really nice if we could pick them down. Because we also didn't, never took any sets from Kings and Dragon X, so... Maybe this time it can be winnable for us. Maybe Hamon Gaming has the potential to take down all the teams in the playoff, not in the regular split, so we will be looking forward to it. Once again, congratulations on your solo MVP. And there are a lot of fans out here, so any message for them? Just like I, did, I, I said before, it hasn't, been, it hasn't been a while since we made it to LCK, but thank you for coming out to support us. So. I hope to make sure to keep going to another round of playoffs. Thank you. So, congratulations on your victory and thank you very much for this interview, Showmaker. This will be the end of the interview with Showmaker from Tabom Gaming and I'm going to back to our casters. Thank you. Thank you, Jisun, as always, for the wonderful translation there as Showmaker. Two MVPs in a row up on stage all by himself. I feel like he handled it very well. And uh, said that Corky's pretty easy, but when he plays it, he takes it to the next level. The matchup is definitely a kind one to Corky, but winning the game with Corky is something that, as uh, Mina touched on, avoided six teams in a row that were largely picking it in that exact matchup. So, but it's done one for getting things together. What a great best of three. Yeah. Again, it's one of those ones where the format, if it was a best of five, it would be one that was going to be building towards something great. But even just as a standalone best of three, we got to see that Dumb One just about edged out Sandbox. They'll finish fifth in their first split, which is still a great result for them. We're going to get to look at that schedule. You guys already know the most important fact. It will be King Zone versus Dumb One in the first best of five on Friday. Hopefully you can live up to this, because like they mentioned also, it has been a very King Zone favorite matchup in history. It definitely has been not even a set taken away uh, from King Zone by Dom One. So, as Vino was saying, you know, the story of Dom One taking out all these teams that they struggled against. And it definitely is because we've talked a lot about how SKT and Griffin are kind of on a different level. For a while, it was only Griffin, but then SKT began to prove it. And then King Zone also slowly but surely began to prove it themselves and make it up to that top tier one in the LCK. But now it's up to Dom One to try to break in on Friday. So no games tomorrow. We'll be back on Friday, then Sunday, usual time of 5 p.m. The playoffs continue. Playoffs continue here for LCK Spring 2019. You guys do not want to miss it. It's going to be a fantastic best of five. So we'll see you guys then for that one. Any final words, Papa? I'm just excited. I'm rubbing the hands. Let's get more games in this LCK playoffs. So we'll see you guys there on Friday for when we do get Nuggery and the boys and a Showmaker up against Death and the rest of his team. We'll see you then.
like my gasoline that makes my dream come true. Cause it's just the beginning. Together we'll be winning.